Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, some bad news. <laughs> as far as part three of the Bowie Night video goes, uh, I screwed up. I'm pretty new to the editing program <laughs> that I'm using, and uh, I screwed up and lost all of my video footage that I took yesterday while I was making the video for part three. So I'll just tell you where we are and what happened. Um, I went ahead and uh, I got these scales for the handle all hollowed out and drilled the holes in them so that um, you know they fit to the tang properly. Uh, so I had those all drilled and cleaned up and you know we had us a handle going on there and uh, and then I heat treated this knife uh, once we got everything done we got our holes drilled and these all hollowed out and uh, you know and it was going to be a pretty cool video you know I mean we got those cleaned up nice and all hollowed out and everything and I feel like such an idiot because I uh, and I even edited the entire video had it all ready to go and I screwed up while I was rendering the video once the editing was all done and I reached up there and highlighted all those clips and deleted them and uh, and that was that I mean normally I take all my video clips off of the camera put them in a video folder on my computer and that way then I can delete them off of the camera and so I don't have all that space taken up on my on my SD card and uh, anyway big screw up so I got all of this handle stuff handled and the holes all drilled and and everything which we needed to do before we could heat treat this knife so uh, then I went uh, to the forge and I I threw a piece of rebar in the forge and and got it uh, nice and hot and stuck it in my uh, oil I just quench my knives in canola oil I got that all heated up to, to, that's just to heat up the oil so it's not such a shock when you actually quench the knife it doesn't shock the steel so bad if you warm the oil up to 100 degrees or 150 degrees somewhere in there so long story short I went ahead once my oil was warmed up and I heated the knife to critical and I did a regular oil quench like I do all of my knives and um, and it uh, didn't work I took a file and it bites right into the steel and if you have hardened steel it shouldn't bite into the steel the file should skate over the steel you know it, it shouldn't be able to bite in so the knife didn't harden. So we know that uh, that this uh, oh, I guess whatever they call it, 440 stainless. I'm not convinced that that's what it was. It said that on the side of the knife, but who knows what? It came from China. This is one of those $20 knives that you can buy all day at a at a gift shop in a truck stop or at a you know flea market. Uh, anyway. So that didn't, the, my, uh, my traditional way of quenching the knives that I make didn't work. So I thought, okay, we'll try uh, an air quench. So I reheated the knife up to critical, took it outside in the winter air, uh, holding it with my tongs, and I just like waved it back and forth in the air like such until it cooled off. File tested it again, it hadn't changed at all. Still the same soft file digs right in no problem so I reheated it again up to critical and I thought this time I'll do just a quick dip in and out of the oil and then I shoved it in my water bucket same result it didn't change this metal at all when I go to file 
it was still just biting right in and filing the knife right off. So I thought, okay, I have one more option. I heated it again to critical. I, um, I yanked it out of the forge with my tongs, ran outside, and let it cool down in the air just till it was gray. You know, just till all the orange was gone. Just till it was gray, so the knife was still extremely hot. And I shoved it right in the snowbank. And I just kept putting it in fresh spots in the snowbank until it was ice cold. And uh, I'm telling you, I don't know what what is up with this steel, but that should have made this so brittle that if I went like that, it would snap. And uh, when it was cooled off, I took it back in the shop, I wiped the water off it, I took the file, and nothing had changed. I mean, it's still just as soft as, as can be. So I don't know what to think about this. Um, I know this, uh, we're not going to waste any more time on uh, a piece of steel that's never going to amount to anything more than uh, a butter knife. So anyway, that's where we're at on that. Uh, and it's like my buddy that I'm doing it for said, but we can't do, we can't hurt it any more than it already is because it was basically a piece of junk when we started and it was just kind of an experimental project to see if we could harden this blade and make it into a decent knife uh, but we're gonna have to chop this one up as a failure now I know that they do make knives out of stainless steel but there's a whole other process that they use it involves cryogenic stuff you know uh, uh, liquid nitrogen and lowering the temperature down to like 220 uh, below zero Fahrenheit or whatever I mean, I mean it's just a can of worms and I was afraid of that when we got into this but um, you know I did quite a bit of forging back in high school and everything and then you get married and have kids and life gets in the way of everything and I'd kind of forgotten about it and so I just recently got back into forging and, and working with a forge and an anvil and and uh, I love making knives and doing what I do and uh, hatchets and everything. In fact, hold on one second. This here is a knife that I made. That's 144 layers of steel. Damascus knife, 144 layers of steel. And you see how the, the, the spine of the knife you can see it the handle scales are just on either side and you know I like that look I think that's so much nicer than a hidden tang uh, you know not and don't get me wrong I'm not putting anyone down that likes to do a hidden tangs a lot of guys do hidden tangs uh, and there's nothing wrong with that that's perfectly fine it's just not my thing um, I would rather do it like this I feel like I like the look. I like the way that that sets off those handle scales. Uh, and I just really like the look of a full tang. I think it's stronger. Because uh, generally when you do a hidden tang, um, unlike this, where I welded this extra piece on, this used to only come to right here. And it just had this little spindly piece. Anyway, most hidden tangs, they're not big and square like this. I did this purposely to try to strengthen the handle so if you wanted to chop on something, you're not gonna break it. But most tangs, most hidden tangs, uh, it'll start out about this wide at the knife, but then they come up like this to a point. You know what I'm not to a point, but they're very narrow on this, on the end. So you end up with like this V-shaped tang and uh, I just, the way that gets so small like that at the end and everything, and you generally, in a hidden tang, guys will put like one pin right up here, close to, uh, close to where the actual blade begins, up where their guard is. And so you've only got the one pin in there, the tang gets so narrow at this end, and uh, I just, I prefer to do mine 
Uh, all my knives have a full tang like this. I think it looks better. It's stronger. I think it'll hold up to more abuse and punishment. Um, but we're going to do things like this. This knife, like I said, is 144 layers of three different types of steel. There is uh, 5160 in here um, from a leaf spring. Uh, and then I took a round saw blade, and you can't use the teeth because they have carbide in the teeth. So I cut strips out of that and just cut off the parts on the ends where the teeth were. And uh, I forged out a billet of leaf spring, a nice long piece of leaf, uh, forged out a billet, cut it in half, forged it out some more because my forge isn't long enough to do a great big long. So I would forge it out, you know, I forged out the end of the stock to a to a reasonable length and then I cut it off and then I forged it out some more and cut off till I ran out of that piece of leaf spring. And uh, so I used the leaf spring, uh, 5160, the round saw blade, which I have no idea uh, what the actual blade, you know, the center part of that blade is made out of. But I know it's a pretty good steel because it's on a saw blade, you, you know, so I, and I use that. And then I have a big piece of bandsaw blade that's probably that thick it's probably an inch wide when I when you cut the teeth off of it it's an inch wide a guy at a wood shop that I stopped to talk to one day gave it to me and I cut several little pieces of that and cut the teeth off so all of my stock was an inch wide and about four inches long and I stacked it up nine layers deep with those three different types of steel and that's what I made my billet out of and I forge welded that all together then I stretched it out and uh, stretched it out into two separate pieces and hot cut it in the center so it was easier to work with. Then I took my each billet and I stretched it out again, folded it over. That gave me 18 layers because I started with 9, I folded it once, that's 18. Stretched it out again, folded it and forge welded it again. That was 36. I did that with each billet. Then I forge welded those two together for 72 layers of steel and then I stretched that billet out and folded it one more time to make 144 layers and that's how and then I made the knife out of 144 layer billet of steel and that's how it came out I think it came out very pretty I really like that pattern in there and then you etch the blade when that first comes out you can't see all those layers because it just looks like a solid piece of steel and so you, you do your grinder work and you clean it up and you grind the bevels in and everything and do some sanding on it and what have you and get it smoothed up where you want it and then you etch it in ferric chloride. I use a mixture half and half ferric chloride and half vinegar. Works really well. Uh, so anyway we do things like that. Um, made this hatchet uh, it's a Native American war hatchet. It, yes, it looks rough because it's supposed to. It's supposed to look like a Native American war hatchet from, you know, the late, the mid to late 1800s. Making this for a friend of mine. Uh, she wants, she's part Native American and she's into all things Native American. She's got dream catchers on her wall and all these different things. So this was a piece of a leaf spring that I forged out into a hatchet head. Then I made this loop out of a piece of 5160 leaf spring, folded it over a round piece of pipe, and, uh, and let the ears come down here. We forge welded that onto the ax head. So it's actually two different forgings that I forge welded together to make this. And then this is just a piece of uh, poplar round stock um, that I, you know, made to look like an old uh, rustic handle. I burned it and uh, then put some paste wax on it and cleaned it up. And, uh, you know, so we do uh, projects like that. I've got, uh, I want to make a draw knife for my neighbor. Uh, you know, just one of those, if you know what a draw knife is, it's, uh, it's a blade. Uh, but then it's got two handles on it and they bend back like this kind of like a set of bicycle handlebars and you can draw 
the knife along wood and shape it and what have you. Uh, you know, he's uh, done a few things for me in the past, helped me out. In fact, he gave me the table saw that I, you saw in my last video that I was cutting these pieces to make these scales. Uh, so he's helped me out here and there, let me borrow a ladder, you know, whatever. So I figured the least I could do uh, was, was to make him something. He, he does woodworking and he's a, a handyman and, and what have you. So I thought a draw knife would be cool. Uh, I have a friend up in Washington who, uh, hang on just one second. I have a friend up in Washington that uh, I made a knife for and uh, this is a very nice knife if it'll show up on camera there uh, I made the knife I made the mount you know to for it to sit on uh, it's mirror polished that was made out of 5160 leaf spring steel uh, I've got uh, just a ridiculous amount of time into the making of that knife um, but he wanted it to be an heirloom that he could hand down to his daughter and that so we made that for him I just shipped it off about a week ago uh, ridiculous amount of hours sanding polishing you know from 120 grit up to 1200 grit on that blade and then a few more hours on the buffing wheel with buffing compound and what have you but uh, he wants me to make him another one similar to that one uh, that's got a six inch blade on it clip point uh, hunter slash camp knife he wants me to make him another one that's not so fancy so he can actually use it uh, this one here that I just shipped off to him is going uh, on his wall so uh, so we have that to do. Um, I'm thinking about making a set of tongs. I have two pairs of tongs. Uh, my first attempt at making a set of tongs, which really didn't come out very well. I mean, I've, I've used them quite a bit, but but they didn't come out real well. And then I have another set of tongs that, uh, well, actually the same uh, friend that brought this to me brought me that set of tongs. They're bolt tongs, and uh, they're pretty nice to use for various uh, things when I'm working in my shop but I want to make a set of knife tongs so that'll be a project we'll do so there's more projects in the works I'm, I really apologize that I screwed this up I'm such an idiot I, I just but this editing program is new to me and um, I had the video all edited, all, all edited out and ready to go and while it was rendering like a moron I went and deleted all of the all of the videos and I was working off of the camera with it plugged into my computer and normally I don't do that I take the videos off of the camera copy and paste them into a video folder on my desktop so that there I can work out of there and then I delete them off of the camera so that I have a fresh open you know empty uh, card in the camera to work with again and uh, while the video was rendering, I deleted the video, the clips off of the camera. So I apologize. Uh, no, uh, no real video of me doing video number three on the Bowie knife. But we're going to call this video number three. Uh, we're going to call this a wash. And uh, like I said, I just can't see putting any more time into. Uh, something that's never going to amount to any more than a butter knife. So, hey, I really, really appreciate you guys uh, checking me out and watching. Um, again, if you like my videos, if you like the content, please uh, hit that like button, subscribe, click on that little bell up there, and you'll be notified uh, anytime I upload a new video. So, there's lots more to come. I really appreciate you guys and uh, look for the next one. We'll see you back in the shop again uh, real soon.